Welcome to Becoming Parents Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Taylor Campbell. I'm a birth and bereavement doula, as well as an adoption and surrogacy doula. Doula means woman who serves. And although I love happy births, adoptions, and surrogacy, the pro bono part of my business is in bereavement. I'm here to help you. I'm also mom of 18, yes, 18 children, with over 30 years experience in the trenches as a mom myself. We have a huge blended family, and I've also experienced the loss of our adult son. Remember, give a shout out to those brave enough to share their stories on how they have become parents. Let's dive in. Welcome to Becoming Parents. I'm your host, Jen Taylor Campbell. I'm really excited. I have Joe Zeman on today. How are you, Joe? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm awesome. I love, not that I don't love having women on, but I really love having men on because I think it's less common and a much different perspective. And I'm super excited about your perspective, because it's very different. So I don't know where you want to jump into the story. I know some bullet points. um, And then at the end, I can't wait to tell people what you do, because anyone who's an entrepreneur is going to want to know. You've also been on my podcast before a long time ago. So two, two years ago, when it was uh, the Naked podcast. Yeah, that's right. Um, So I'll have a link to that. We have a link so that people can find you anywhere. But you started off your um, information to me saying being a dad is the biggest honor a man receives. So jump into your story wherever you want. Okay. So there, oh man, already. Um, so the reason why to me, it's the biggest honor is because for me, I can't have kids. So I was blessed. I have something called Kleinfelter syndrome. And one of the things of that is I can't have kids. So you do a sperm count, they test everything. Uh, and lo and behold, low sperm count, no kids. So I'm like, all right, well, there's still options out for me as, you know, in a relationship, you could always adopt, you could always take over being a parent. Um, and so I was blessed when I met my wife that she has a son. And I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing because <laughs> I've always wanted to have a son. I've always wanted to have a daughter too, but um, I was just blessed that she already had a son. So the reason why I say it is because I also watch other dads out there who um, are not dads. You know, they have kids and then they have nothing to do with their kids. Mm -hmm. So me as a dad, not being able to have kids, this is by far one of the biggest blessings and biggest honor. So when people, like I just found out a friend of mine, he's like, guess what, Joe? I'm going to be a dad. I'm like, your life is going to change. It's going to change for the better. It's going to get hectic at certain points in time. But for the, it's going to make you a better person because you, I think you love differently when you're a parent than when you are just single. Well, yeah. I mean, when you're single, you can be selfish. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. You can even be in a relationship. You know, my best friend from college, they decided not to have kids. And that's a tough decision too, being Mm -hmm. able to and deciding not to. And she really loved her life and she knew that they were They lived a selfish relationship and they wanted to stay that way. And I think, you know, there's so many decisions with parenting. Like I gave her kudos for realizing that and and making that decision. The same thing. I mean, female infertility is discussed a lot more than male Mm -hmm. infertility. Um, Just to clarify, I don't know anything about the syndrome. So are there other things that it does that impact your life physically? Is there, are there any issues? Do you have a lower life, a shorter lifespan? Uh, Not a shorter lifespan that I know of, Um, but I have an extra female chromosome. Okay. So Kleinfelter's is one in every five males have it. And they may have no clue that they have it. Some have all symptoms. Some have, you know, one or two symptoms. So I have an extra female chromosome and my family teases me because they said that's what makes me emotional, right? Um, but then like, um, is this a PG-13 or R-rated? What no, you can How talk can about talk? anything you want. All right, I got fucking man titties. Um, and so even on my podcast, before I go on, I joke about it to lighten up the room for me. So I've had man boobies ever since I was a little kid <clears throat> and I didn't know why that was. Okay. Um, and then there's other things like, you know, little, little to none body hair. Um, mm. So there's just other things that go with it. Okay. Uh, just, I was just curious to see what other issues may be challenging. Like, you know, a shorter lifespan would be a really huge thing, but nothing from right. that. So you were a guy who wanted to have kids and knew you couldn't have kids. 
yeah, I didn't find out till even before I met my wife, I was dating someone, I guess it was kind of serious and, um, you know, we didn't use protection. So I'm like, Why can't, what's wrong with me? Uh, and, she, you know, she was just like, well, you should get tested. And I got tested and I found out. I mean, good for you for not that, I mean, seriously, not that male testing for infertility is super challenging compared to mm. women, but good for you <laughs> for taking the steps to get tested, to find out, is there something going on with you? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And then you had to process just like women do the fact that you can't have kids, but wanted to. And that's, I don't want to minimize that here because right. I know for women who come on sobbing about going through infertility or losing children, not being able to carry them. I went through infertility and I lost three of my pregnancy. So we just kind of skip over the fact that this happens to men too. And that maybe mm -hmm. you wanted to become a dad and it's tough. So awesome. You met your wife. Not very many men are like, yes, this woman has a child. <laughs> <laughs> right. Most men are like, let me find someone who doesn't have a child. And I wasn't, right. I wasn't looking for that. I was friends with her first and we just uh, happened to meet up right before Christmas at a, at a, at a bar slash club where I would live. Uh, not expecting to see each other and kind of three months later, boom, we're married. <laughs> Holy cow. So because <laughs> when you know, you know, my wife pretty much said like, hey, you know, I have a son. Um, I'm yeah. only looking to have a serious relationship. I'm not looking to just date around and whatnot. I'm like, I can respect that. So she's like, if you're ready for a, um, a long term relationship, then we can do this. If you're not, then we're not doing it. So I had to make a decision right then and there. Is this something I want the rest of my life? Or is this something that I, you know, should I just move along? And so something just, you know, you just have a feeling when you know. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. And we didn't, we didn't really date much because she had a child. And, and if I could say anything to men out there, date, never stop dating. If oh. you stop dating, you lose that connection. Amen. But, so never stop dating. And that's one of my biggest flaws and regrets is that, you know, we, we stopped later on in life, we stopped dating, but, um, yeah, three months later, we just, we went to a place called the Hitching Post, you know, <laughs> called like two people and then, you know, called our parents to be like, guess what? I'm married. So it's interesting. Go ahead. I would say, and then in that process, it was, um, we had filed for um, my adoption, even yeah. while we were doing it. And what's sad is to me, it's sad because uh, her ex-husband had no problem signing his rights away. So in Let's, order to adopt a child, you yeah. have to be willing to do that. So, that, so to that, me, that's, that's why that's I say be it's a an conversation. Honor. Yeah. yeah. It's, so to that's me, that's definitely. an honor to be able to have kids when I cannot and be able to adopt um, when I cannot, or even if you wanted to go the foster route, you know, foster kids and turn into adoption. Yeah. But so I was thankful to him that he was willing to do that because now our son is our son. You guys met, and it's interesting. I have a 24 year old daughter who's dating someone, and he has mm -hmm. a five year old son. And I just mm -hmm. looked at her and I said, um, This really, if he's a good parent to his son, this relationship will be vastly different. It will move faster mm -hmm. and the priorities will be different. Like from out of the gate, those priorities are going to be different for him. And she goes, Yeah, I noticed. Like, <laughs> You know, I'm like, look, when you have a child, your life changes. And I know, you know, but until mm -hmm. you do it, you don't know entirely. And, you know, you have, you jump in and have to figure out um, very quickly how, how he parents, how you parent together, what the dynamics are. You always, in most situations, you'll always have the ex-wife that's mm -hmm. present there, you know, like it, it's a much different relationship and it should be better because this guy's got his act together and he's more responsible and he knows what he wants and he won't settle and he doesn't put up with stuff. And, but he knows how important the relationship is because he's lost one. And so, you know, that was your wife. Your wife mm -hmm. was like, I have a child. I don't want to mess around. Look, sex is easy. It's, mm -hmm. If that's what you want, it's easy. And you can keep your home life out of it entirely. Right. But if that's not the only thing that you're looking for, if you want a relationship and you have a child, it looks very, very different. So it's, uh, it's I was like that when I was single, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's different when you're a parent. You have your priorities are your child first. Yeah. You don't, your priorities are not your priorities anymore. Your number one priority is your child and taking care of your child and making sure that your child has everything that it 
needs, not everything that it wants as it grows right. up, but just everything that it needs. Um, and so as you learn, the other thing that I learned as a parent is, unfortunately, I learned it later in life, is uh, you're not your child's best friend. Thank you. You're, you're the parent. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's another fault that I have is I wanted to be more of my son's, you know, more best friend and less as a parent. And right. unfortunately that, you know, that causes issues. Um, it's just, yeah. So be a we, parent, we can talk a about that too. Um, how old was he when you guys met and how involved was his biological dad? Uh, the biological dad was not involved. Um, and he was like two years old when I met. Oh, wow. Oh, so that's... he's, he, he's only known me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, he was like two and he was three when we, when I adopted him. You guys get married quickly. You jump in. What were some of the challenges you talked about? Make sure you keep dating, which I am huge on, because if your relationship as a couple fails, you're you failed the kids right so mm -hmm. um and dating I mean, yes I and think, no yes, yes and, no. and no i don't think you don't fail them i think you teach them along the way of um this is what to do this is what not to do uh mm -hmm. if you're not dating you still have to make sure that there's a connection and then you can always overcome that and date yeah. again and that's showing your child lessons along the way of kind of like the never give up if this is the relationship for you or this is the marriage for you and you're doing it once then these are things that you fight for uh, i agree i agree i i appreciate that correction um it's just harder it, it's not the like i didn't get married to get divorced and i felt mm -hmm. really so so much guilt that it had negative effects on the kids. So mm -hmm. yes, you can do a lot. You can do a lot about teaching them. So he was two and you jumped in. So what were some of the challenges? I want you to go into the dating, you know, date the person that you're with. And what were some of the challenges in becoming an instant parent? And l like the adoption, how I, we, we had like pictures with judges and mm -hmm. the attorneys and happy stuff. And like, it was super emotional. So tell me about the adoption, the challenges in parenting and dating. Let's, let's work okay. on those. So the adoption, I think was fairly simple. You know, you reach out to an attorney, you find one near you, they put in paperwork. Again, you, you reach out to the ex, you know, this person wants to adopt. Are you okay relinquishing your rights as a parent? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes or no. If the answer is no, then guess what? You're not adopting. Right. Um, if the answer is yes, then you get the paperwork and poof, you know, you go to the court. Um, and it wasn't emotional. It was just me and my wife and our son and, and her mom. I think that were there. If I remember my memory sucks. So, but I believe it was just that there were picture takes taken. I know we have the picture someplace. Right. Um, and then it's fairly simple. You just file some paperwork. And then, uh, the hardest part I think is you change the birth certificate and you yes. change the social, social security cards so that yep. they match and have your last name. Now the yep. previous ones we still have, but mm -hmm. um, because then moving forward in life, it's going to be a record of the child with this with the previous last name. Right. Yeah, so, I did the same thing. I kept I kept their original birth certificates in their baby book. That was all cool, so they could see it. But adoption's not just like it. It legally changes everything. It acts as if you were the person at the hospital. Correct. And we, ours, you're not, you're usually not supposed to have an adoption go through. It usually takes like a year or so, mm -hmm. but somehow through the grace of God, ours went through like in a, in a few months. Okay. Usually, well, I don't know. I I've done a private adoption also, and it was a minimum of six months. Like you had to have mm -hmm. the child. It gives the other parent a chance to change their mind. There were, there are all kinds of, it depends on what state you live in, but yes, usually it's six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So jump into what it was like. I mean, you guys met, you got married at three months and you were a dad. You can really, really want to become a parent. A lot, a lot of us want to become parents and then go, holy crap, this is so much harder or different than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I think one of the biggest challenges is co-parenting, mm -hmm. right? So you, you get married. So you've known each other for three months. You get married, you move in, right? It's all fairly, when you come to think about it, right? It's all fairly quick. So you haven't really gotten to know the ins and out of that person or the things that are going to irritate you and vice yes. versa. And then Correct. it was just, right. And it's just jump in and 
you know, start, start parenting. I mean, it's fairly quick. Like yeah. there's no, uh, especially just at, at, you know, three months. So I think some of the challenges were just learning how to co-parent together, learning almost like learning your role. Yeah. Like what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. Um, and maybe that's why for me, it took, that's why for me, probably I wanted to be a best friend versus a parent. Mm -hmm. right because I didn't um it's not that I don't think that I knew my role it's just that I didn't understand it maybe in hindsight looking back on it yeah. um so just learning how to just learning how to be a parent learning how to put the child first um and I've always loved kids so that's not an issue for me um and, and even now I mean we have a tr we have they say it takes a village we have a tribe that raises our kids together yeah so uh so I have more than one child that's just not my own um so I think that's just the challenge is learning how to co-parent together. And then when it comes to discipline, being on the same page, like you have your way of doing things. She has her way of doing things. You got to figure out how to come together in the middle and yeah. raising a child in that day and age. Mm -hmm. I remember going to like a target and I remember that he was acting up. So I pinched him, right? Because to, to get him to stop. And like a woman looked at me, she was like, oh my gosh, like you're abusing your child. And some people react differently. I'm just like, mind your own business. If this is how I'm parenting like our child. You, you do what you do. I'm going to do what I do. So I think, you know, how you parent your child is completely different. Um, so it's just, just, I, I think just getting to some sort of normalcy and togetherness on how to do it together. Don't try which, to do it alone. Which is so, I mean, it doesn't, even if you are married and live together and plan a child and have a child, I, it, you know, you think moving in with somebody and learning all their quirks is tough. And I'm not minimizing that. That can be tough. It is nothing like having a child together. So when you do it all at the same time, there's a lot you have to work through. I have a blended family, so mm -hmm. I, I completely relate to that. Um, You're what, a mom of 18? 18, yeah. So- <laughs> so I've adopted five and I have kids long-term, mm -hmm. but then we blended families too. And we moved in at three months and we blended, I had eight kids at home and he had four kids and we blended into 12. And um, yeah, it it's really interesting to be your own. And it, the only difference is that we were both our own parents to our own kids. And then we had to figure it out, but I don't think it matters. I mean, you, it doesn't matter how you become a parent. You need to figure out how to work with this person and discipline, like no matter the situation. And that is a really challenging situation. I learned that, or we learned together that, you know, we would listen to friends or family, but yeah. that's ultimately how are we going to raise your child together? Now, how the outside world is going to raise our child. And it doesn't matter what they think is right or wrong. It doesn't matter. It's what we think what's right or wrong. Outside of abuse and neglect, there are Correct. bazillion ways to raise kids. And it's like junior high school. You're never going to do it right. You're never mm -hmm. going to be right. You know, someone's always got something to say about how you're doing it from about everything. And it's none of their business. You're right. You did mention, though, it takes a village to raise a child. And I love that philosophy because when my kids were younger, um, I had a, an amazing community of support. And it really made, I look at my kids, you know, my grandkids, my mm -hmm. kids raising their kids. And I'm like, look, the di the only difference for me was that I surrounded myself with a village that I could depend on. And we all worked together and like cooked together and b rotated babysitting and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Tell me about what that meant to you. And I also want to, I want you to talk more about being friends with your son and how that ended up biting you if it did, or how you got mm -hmm. a different perspective. Yeah. But tell me about the village. Cause that's important. So, um, yeah, I mean, my wife had, had friends, so we blended the friends together kind of, and more like, I kind of left my friends behind because they were in a different state in their life. They were still playing the single life and they didn't have family and they still wanted to party all the time. And, um, and then you come to obviously someone who has a child and then their friends have children. So it's two different, two different lifestyles. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just raising the kids. I know that when our son was young, you know, her cousin watched him. He was, he was the man, Manny, they called him Manny. So he helped okay. raise a child, you know, a little bit, like watch, watch and take care of him. Um, and then her best friend had two, two kids. 
-hmm. And then you meet other families that are close that have kids. So it's just everyone watching out for one of the other's kids. And we're always there for each other. And good or bad, our door is an open door policy. Like if you want to come talk, you come talk. You want to come hang out, you come hang out. Um, So I think that has been helpful. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. I think it's really important to find families that you you connect with the adults really well. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, kids generally, especially when they're young, like other kids and they play pretty well together and there are always issues, but it's really, that part is easy. Or I think it's easier. It's finding other adults that have kids similar ages where you can completely trust them with your kid if there's an emergency or whatever. So yeah, and then yeah. it's also I think it's also then your <clears throat> friends that are close also helping talk to your child when oh. you know having another outlet. Like if you're not the outlet, if your child's not to come come to you, then they find an outlet that they can go talk to. Yep. And then also that comes along with like, hey, if like your child is screwing up right, or acting out, and you can't get to your child, get through to your child, someone else in the tribe can get through to your child. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. So as an example, I remember I was teaching um, our daughter to tie her shoes, and she just, it wasn't clicking, and like for Mm -hmm. like three months, I'm teaching her how to tie her shoes, and she came home, got off the bus one day in kindergarten, and I'm like, oh, who tied your shoes? And she said, I did. Because chronically untied shoe. And I'm like, you tied your shoes? And she goes, yeah, Johnny taught me. Like months, months I had. And I'm like, yeah, right, Johnny. Cool. That's cool. Okay. But it is, it's that. It's that other person. Yeah. As a parent, you're like, how come I couldn't get my child to do that? But someone else can. Right. Or. But that's it. That's how it works. Right. Like if you're if you're messy, if your kids are messy here, but they go to other people's house and they they pick up and they do the dishes and you're like, those are the signs of I'm raising my child. Right. Yeah. And when they grow up, you know, they start to give you more respect um, and then they talk to you about personal things as they get older. Right. That's the I did my job as a parent and I think I'm on the right yep. path of raising my child the right way. I agree. Those are great mile markers. And, you know, not having ego about the fact that Johnny taught her how to tie her shoes and I didn't, you know, it doesn't matter where they, who they talk to and where they get that information. Um, I'm also glad that my kids act up the most with me because I'm the person that they feel the most comfortable with. So yeah, they clean at other people's houses, but you know, they, they feel comfortable being jerks to me and having those conversations. <laughs> I don't always love that, but I mean, I'm glad they feel comfortable. <laughs> um, right. Tell so me about- So you talked about- Yeah, um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you first. No, being friends yes. and dating. So Which one? Being friends. So um, I think that for me, uh, um, if you put yourself in more of a friend role as a parent, then your child will learn to take advantage of you, Mm -hmm. right? So, um, and for me, it was, you know, I, both of us went to all the football practices and games and all that kind of stuff. And we're very involved in his life. Um, And um, yeah, we're just super involved in in our, in our son's life. Now he's in the army and, you know, doing, doing, doing greater things, but just being involved. I think that for me, when you are a friend first and a parent second, then they just take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. And then later on, that can be thrown back in your face. So I agree. When people are like, oh, my child is my best friend. I think that's a mistake. That is a mistake. Mm-hmm. They're going to steamroller you and you didn't have kids to, you didn't give birth to best friends. You can go find best friends, but you gave mm-hmm. birth to a child you need to parent. And it is a very different role. And that doesn't mean that you have to be stern disciplinarian. I think Mm -hmm. I'm a stern disciplinarian when I need to be, and I'm really fun and you can support your kids and go to all their games and like all of that stuff. That's parenting. That's part of parenting and responsibility. It's different though. It's, it's acting like they're buddies and that's not their role that I think it also puts a lot of pressure on the child to grow up feeling like they need to grow up on their best friend. Right. Like that's a Mm -hmm. responsibility that they shouldn't have. But I also agree with you, like your son's in the army. So he's an adult. My adult kids, when they move out and they want to come and talk to you, 
I've had kids go like, can we have a conversation where you're like not acting like my mom? And I'm like, <laughs> probably not, but yes. Like, what do you want to talk about? I'm not here to discipline you, give you consequences when you're older. You're doing that on your own. Right, that's but life. You get life consequences. You get life consequences, but I can be there as a sounding board. I can help, I can jump in. And that's when your relationship starts becoming more like friends because they're adults on their own. And it's a really, that's a challenging, that can be a challenging um, transition with kids, right? But it's so cool. Yeah. Do you feel like being friends with him just retrospectively, you realize it wasn't the best thing or? Yes. Did, okay. Yes. So at the and time you didn't? At the time I didn't in hindsight, um in hindsight, I think it's better to be the dad first, teach the yeah. dad lessons or the hard lessons, be more, a little bit more sterner. Um, because then I think that some, maybe the attitude, right. The attitude that the kids gain maybe will be less. And, um, like, this is something my mom did to me, put the fear of God in me. Right. So I remember one time with my mom, I went to raise my hand to her. She's like, Oh, you want to hit me? Oh, how about this? How about I beat the living shit out of you? Right then you can call the police because I threatened to call the police that she was abusing me even though she wasn't um and she's like I'll beat the living shit out of you then you can have a reason to call the police right that was the last time I ever raised my hand to my mother right versus to I think for my son just I don't think I ever did that I never put the fear of God in him right um other people in our tribe did that um but I never did that. So that's, I think, one of my regrets as a parent is not, I don't want to make it sound bad, like, but just make sure that my, knows my, for my son to know his limits with me. He definitely knows his right. limits with, with his mom. But with me, I mean, even today, my wife will be like, stop picking on your father. You know, he'll be poking me and pinching me. And I mean, he's a strong kid and he's bigger than me. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, I think because someone told him once that, hey, you're superior over your dad because you're stronger than him. And that kind of went to his head. And I didn't find out about that later. But I think that if I was a little bit more stern with him, then things may have been different. But in all honesty, there's things that I want to change, but, you know, life happens for a reason. And you know, right. now we're at where we're at now. And we, my son and I have a great relationship he has a great relationship with his mom. You know, he's, you know, in the army overseas. He talks to his mom way more than he talks to me. Um, I mean, she'll FaceTime him every day if she can, a couple times mm -hmm. a day, because we, we only have one, one and done. So you got to do it right the first time. You don't have like the <laughs> second or thirds or 18 other choices that hopefully you did it right. Um, <laughs> oh, you so, screw up so all <laughs> of them anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there, there's no, there's no utopia, <laughs> but um that's awesome I love that he's now an adult and you have that perspective let's talk about dating yeah dating your wife um and I know you know you can discuss this any way you want but I think it's a huge look having kids is stressful and hard and it's your top priority and yet you need your relationship to be your top priority so that you stay together and mm -hmm. um yeah like not yeah. yeah talk to I me think about that, this i think that probably for me i just got comfortable oh you're yeah, like oh that's you're, easy. you're you're doing this thing right and it's you know it's go 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 all week long and then you have sports on the weekends and then you're just tired as a parent uh so then instead of maybe getting dressed up or whatever and going out uh to grab dinner it's, we could just get it and bring it home right we could just do this and bring it home and then you're not taking yourselves out of the home environment and putting it into like, I guess, a dating environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, that's my biggest regret is not continuing because then you lose your connection over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I was you know, still married, whatever, but you lose that connection and it's yeah. hard once you lose it to gain it back again. It's interesting that it seems easier. And I think this is a big reason why marriages, this is part of why marriages fail. You lose that connection. It's easier to go to find it with somebody new because it's fresh mm -hmm. and exciting than the person that you have baggage with or however you want to say that. But it's it has been one of my biggest like date night needs to happen. And we had rules because I know 
with Dane and I at first, um, and that's not the only reason that marriages fail, but if you don't, if you're not connected to this person, you start to, you're apathetic towards it, right? Like Mm -hmm. you don't, you don't care that much because you don't need to. And it slips in over time, but I'm like, we need to have date night. And date night for us meant that like the kids aren't around. So what do we do? We talk about the kids and we talk about our relationship and we, (laughs) we made a rule very quickly that if there's something that we need to do to talk about kids, because they're not around in ear distance, you know, they're not in listening distance. We do that at the very beginning of a date. Like what is anything going on with the kids that we really need to address while we're alone and then no kids. And we do not talk about our relationship. We're not there to beat each other up or talk mm-hmm. about the issues or what we're there to build it. And yeah. so, yeah, you have to, I mean, it's not just keeping that romance alive or continuing to date your spouse. It's like, we have ground rules around dating too. Yeah. So it's and, con- I guess what you're saying, it's continually building the connection, right? Making yeah. sure the connection is still there on a, not just on a physical level, but I guess more on a mental level as well. Correct. Yeah. You want to have conversations. Like I want to know about work and I want to know about like what's happening in your life. And, um, oh, that's okay. Well, we have dogs barking. It's not a big deal. Um, yeah. I mean, like, why did you get together? What were the things we, I can't imagine after almost a decade running out of things to talk about that are just fascinating. Something that you see in the news, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk to you about this or a right. funny video or like, there's, there are always things to talk about. You don't run out of that stuff if you keep that connection alive. And so what's it like? Did you, did you and your wife have a conversation about how the connection wasn't as good and wanting to get it back? Um. Yeah, I think like all marriages, people have issues in their marriage or things come up. Uh, And so there have been times where marriage was tough and you're unsure. And it's the simple question is, are you still in it? Yeah. Like, are you still going to push forward? You know, if the answer is no, then we're done. Right. If you're not willing to, if you're still not in it, even though things may be not the best right now, but are you still in it? Am I still your person? Mm. If the answer is hesitant or the answer is no, then that's when you're done. Right. But if the answer is yes, I'm still in it and you're still my person, then we can still keep moving together and move together forward. What would, now that your son's an adult, do you ever have conversations? He doesn't have kids yet. Oh, no, no. <laughs> my wife's like five years. Wait till your first five years in the military is done. Then you can think about having kids because <laughs> there's so much growing up to do, right? You're 20 years old. Like Oh, he's okay. Live- okay. No, no, he's young. Yeah. So yeah. live a life a little bit, right? Live life a yes. little bit, right? Date around, mm-hmm. do your thing. Don't have kids. Yeah. We tell, we tell our kids, we were both <laughs> 21 when our first were born and we were like, not that we, like, I have no regrets about that, but it was mm-hmm. what I wanted. So, right. and, and also you I had no idea what it was going to be like. I didn't have some fairy tale like, oh, it's going to be skipping and rainbows and great. But I knew I wanted to have kids and mm-hmm. I don't regret it at all. But I also, you don't realize how much you lose in your life, that whole ability to do what you want, that selfish time of your life that, and it, it is fun and you should do it until mm-hmm. you're yeah, really ready. <laughs> yeah, be selfish. Yeah. It's not a negative thing because you won't get that back until your kids leave the house. What is empty nest like for you and your wife? Is that an issue for you? Um, I think it. I think it was in the beginning. I think we're adapting now. He's been he's been not at home now for a year. He comes back every you know twice a year, I guess, when he can. And even now, he's like, I'm not coming home. If, you know, if if he's allowed to come home for Christmas, he's like, I'm not coming home for a while after that. Like, I'm gonna yeah. go out and live life. And I'm like, as you should. As um, you should as you should go experience that, go be selfish. Um, But I think it just takes an adjustment, you know, especially depending how many kids you have, if you're cooking for three or four or five, right? Now you, when I first started, I would cook and I'd be like, there's so much leftover. Like, and we don't eat, we don't, we're not really, we don't eat a lot of leftovers. So now you're like learning how to, even I, even went to the store, you know, I cook now. So um, even going to the store, I'm like, I just need enough for two people. Like, I don't even know how to, I don't know how to size it. I don't know how to still, I still have issues. Right. 
Um, yes, and then it's just, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, especially if you have like even in it four doesn't kids, matter right? <laughs> having a high school college age boy and the um, volume it's like that three people. Is... <laughs> <laughs> I get it though. I get it. Right, because our son was a football player, so he ate a lot. Right, yeah. so he would eat for like two or three people. So you cook, you just buy more, you cook more. I will say we have saved a bunch of money <laughs> because you're not. And if you look at my fridge right now, you're gonna like, are you guys doing okay? Because there's nothing in it, right? Because I go to the store and I buy stuff for me, you know, to make dinner for two or three nights, and that's it. So I'm not one to plan ahead. It's just spur of the moment. So, and then just getting used to a quiet house. Right. Like, yeah. Getting used to a quiet house when you're used to all these things, those things you actually miss. Like I miss those. So like when he does come home to visit and all of his buddies come over, like I'm ready to hang out. Right? You, know, right. you don't have that, you know, when they're out on our back deck playing beer pong, guess what? Dad's playing beer pong with them. Right. So, right. Um, so you just, you, you miss certain things. I do. You, I enjoy the quietness now. But I also mm -hmm. still miss the, yep. you know, him not being around here, because it's what almost if, like that's like the, that's almost like your the kids you don't realize it until they're gone. They're like the glue to the household, right? So now you have to learn how to be the glue just to people. Has that helped your relationship? It's done uh, both. We still have one at home, but we've. I mean, there's 17 kids that have gone through and out of the house, and we're down to one who's 13, and um. It it has in some ways and it hasn't in other ways. Mm -hmm. Um, there's I I want to say there's still challenges, like uh, you know my relationship's not perfect as no, no people are, so I'm still trying to figure out how to work at it. Um, yeah, and just now work at it alone because it's just there's just two of us. I don't want that's where maybe came off the wrong way by your expression, but um, you know if there any sort of issues come up, my son was the one that I could talk to her he was very observant so he would he would ask me questions if he noticed something Dad, oh. what's going on with this how come this and I'm like I don't know go ask your mother and then in hindsight the next step for me should have been let me go talk to my wife this is what our son noticed maybe you should talk to him versus bundling it up and not because I'm not one to share my feelings a lot so um yeah so I should have in hindsight done those things um, so if you're listening dads and your kids bring up something and you're like me and you don't share your feelings, go share your feelings that yeah. it will, it will cause issues in your relationship if you don't. Yeah, that's actually, that's some great advice to dads. Let's talk, let's end by talking about what you do, because yeah. I believe in shameless self-promotion. I have all of your <laughs> links. I know you have a podcast, but tell me all of the things that you do and how you can help people. I know I have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen. Okay. This stuff I can talk all day on. Yeah, me, right. Personally, I, I bundle up, right? Um, so we own a marketing company. So we've been in business 10 years. It's called Valor Marketing. Uh, we're fairly successful boutique marketing company. And we work with primary small to medium sized businesses. If you're a company that has 300 employees, that's not my client. My client is usually the mom and pop business owner, the roofer or the plumber, or maybe the smaller law firm that needs help um, being found better online, increasing their presence and just being a better option to grow their business. So we help with websites and SEO and Google ads and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and then um, and we're nationwide. So we have clients currently in 23 states. Awesome. So we're not just locally here in Washington state. That's where a lot of our clients are, but we have clients in 23 states. From the success of that company, my partner and another client formed another marketing company called Advanced Wastewater Promotions with specific to the septic and wastewater industry. So it's very niche. So we have that company and I'm helping build that company. We have a third marketing company that we're trying to start. Uh, and Valor Marketing is the hub behind everything. It's the support system that supports all three, three companies. But we have another company called HTK Digital Marketing that we're trying to start with another client specific to helping businesses uh, that are Mormon owned or like-minded to Mormons. Now, I'm not Mormon, but our client is. And the goal with that company is to have our salespeople Mormon kids or young adults who are just trying to earn extra income right for their mission or for college or whatever they're trying to earn money for 
my goal behind that would be in the future, helping these kids maybe start their own LLCs and then kind of teach them about business. So, hey, when, instead of you getting paid, your business gets paid and then you pay yourself yeah. a salary, right? So you teach them something. So that way in the future, if college doesn't work out for them, then they have something else to fall back on and they have a business going. Um, and if that's not busy enough, then we also have a podcast. So our podcast is called Ask Valor Masterminds. The goal is to bring on different guest speakers to talk about topics related to being in business. So like tomorrow's guest. So we do twice a month. We've been doing it three years. I'm going to say we're 80 episodes in. Um, I'm never worried about the following, so to speak. I'm just worried about pushing out content. My goal is to affect one business at a time. So I don't, I don't look at stats, like how many YouTube subscribers I have or views or downloads. Uh, it's just affecting one business. But like tomorrow's guest is a woman who sells, I think like life insurance, supplemental insurance, but her past, she did hiring. So she's going to be talking about hiring and how to hire in-house or how to hire, how to do interviews via Zoom. Um, we've had, we've had all kinds of guests on. We've had, I think one of my favorite one was Brittany Wagner. She was from the documentary series on Netflix called Last Chance You. And she has her own business now called 10,000 Pencils and she's a coach. Um, she's one of fun. We had on, for your female audience, we had on Dr. Jen Welter. She was the first female to coach in the NFL. Wow. Um, we've had on some pretty amazing women who are like two-time TEDx speakers. Uh, I think we've had six international guests on, uh, but really it's just talk about topics related to business and then have them share tips and then put their contact information in there if people want to follow up with them. Awesome. No, you don't have enough going on. Joe, <laughs> thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate your perspective and I love your story. So thank you so much. And I know you're going to put my contact information in there. And dudes, yep. men, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer any questions you have offline like my story maybe you relate to my story maybe you don't uh maybe you're more like me and you bottle up your emotions and maybe you're just puke them out to everyone uh whatever the case may be if you have questions on uh, i think that's my mission that's god's mission for me it's just to help people so yeah happy to help awesome. in any way i can